Hi, I'm Beth Bray with My Counselor Online, and I am with Josh Spurlock today. He's the director for My Counselor Online and the author to this article. It's called How to Make Your Wife Cry, A Christian Man's Guide to Sex. First, let me say, Josh, when I first read the title, I was like, well, that doesn't sound very good. I mean, <laughs> what, is that what you're encouraging people to do? But it's how to make your wife cry in a good way. In other words, move her to the point of tears, um, which is evident in the music video that you have on there. It's an awesome song, but it's basically um, when a man's goodness is just so good to his wife that it's just very moving, which happens to us if you do things the right way. But I That's want to true, you. right? <laughs> but I want to talk to you about this article because I, I do feel like it's, it's eye-opening, obviously, and, and helpful for, for males that may want to kind of get an understanding of what it is they're supposed to do and maybe why it's not really clicking and working. And the truth is, and from reading your article, um, there's a, we're, men and women are different. That's certainly not a brand new mm -hmm. statement. But it feels like kind of your idea of what sex should look like in the bedroom. It should be kind of this harmonious you both kind of have an idea of what you're doing and where you're going. And it really isn't like that at all. Sometimes it's mm -hmm. very clumsy, especially at first. Um, so I want to talk to you about why that is and really um, the perception of sex between versus men versus women and why it does kind of have a clumsy feel to it sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Beth. And let's maybe start with uh, why it is that we're even talking about sex, right? Because someone had the question of, and this is a Christian organization, do Christian counseling, you know, what business do they have in uh, talking about sex, putting sex, you know, mentioning sex in a video? How is that appropriate? And is that even okay? Can they say that? And, and I just want to speak to that for a moment to say that, you know, and ask the question, wh whose idea was sex? Right, that sex is God's idea. You know, the idea of penises, vaginas, orgasms, sexual pleasure, our bodies being wired to enjoy uh, sex, uh, the uh, sexual intimacy between husband and wife. We didn't come up with that. We didn't think of that. That wasn't my idea. That wasn't your idea. Man didn't create that. That was God's idea. And he wired us for it. And so if anybody ought to be talking about it, it ought to be God's people. And we ought to be talking God's truth about it, because what happens is in the absence of God's people talking about God's truth as it pertains to sex, that void gets infilled with all sorts of distortion, all sorts of brokenness. So we're here, we're going to talk about sex, and we're going to communicate God's truth about sex, and specifically, just kind of talking to some men a little bit about uh, the differences between men and women. Because what happens and what causes some of this clumsiness that you mention is uh, very often men approach sex like, well, like men in that. The problem is they didn't marry a man, right? That in a heterosexual marriage relationship, their partner is a woman, which is very different than them. And uh, if they try to engage sexually their wife in the same way that they are naturally bent, it's not going to go very well. You know, that it may work for them if they were, you know, making love to a man, but they're not married to a man. And it's not going to make, it's not going to work for them to engage their wife like she's a man. The, the neurology is different, the wiring is different, the emotions are different. God designed women different than men, and he did that on purpose. It's not because they're broken, it's not because there's something's malfunctioning, that they're not responding like a man. It's because God made them differently, and he did that on purpose. It's a good thing. It's a good thing for the relationship, it's a good thing for them, because God actually designed women to be able to enjoy sex more than men. That God, it's a neurological, it's a medical fact that God wants women to enjoy sex more than men. And there's, that's another article, but we can go all through the, the facts that demonstrate that. So if a husband and wife are not enjoying a passionate sexual relationship, something's wrong. 
But that doesn't mean that there's something wrong with the wife if she's not experiencing sexual desire. There's a real possibility that there may be something wrong with the relationship and something wrong with the way the husband is engaging the sexual relationship. And that's really what this article is about. Mm -hmm. It absolutely is. And it does really um, put into light really kind of the black and whiteness of how different we are um, with our spouse. Um, some of the terms that you use that I just um, was shocked because I'm not a guy and I never thought of sex in this way. So it was, it was very interesting to read terms like um, you said, uh, you know, sex is not a competition. It's not about achieving, arriving, scoring, hunting, winning. I mean, for, for me, <laughs> I was like, you mean for them, it's not about connecting and feeling close <laughs> and feeling loved and desired and secure. <laughs> that's, that's what it is for me. So I, I it, it really, um, it was comforting kind of to read it and be like, Oh, okay. All right. I can see why. Give you know, a little insight into, into your husband, like huh? Yes. And the, the motivation behind it, what you're trying to achieve from it, um, uh, is, is, is different. So that was really eye opening to me. Um, cause men are looking for a formula, that, thought, right? They're, they're going to be Don Juan yes. and want to do this, be a masterful lover. And, you know, they're, they're looking for a formula that's going to tell them how to win because men want to win and that they want to win in yeah. sports. They want to win in their work. You know, there, there's not an area in a man's life that he doesn't want to win. And that includes with his wife and connecting with his wife and, and sexually with his wife. He wants to know how to win. And so it can feel very defeating and very frustrating if it feels like he's not winning in that department, that uh, his wife is not enthusiastic about connecting sexually if they, uh, you know, it's a source of tension and stress and conflict instead of a source of joy and fun and passion and pleasure and enjoyment in the relationship. And so men oftentimes come in and when they're talking to a sex therapist, they want to know what's the formula, you know, how do I, how do I win when it comes to this? And there is, there is a bit of a formula in there. And the, the formula goes like this. It says, if in the way you love your wife, that you uh, cultivate a kind of dynamic where uh, your wife you know, is showered with your adoration, right? that you adore your wife, you love your wife well, which is not natural for men. We're not naturally bent to love a woman well. It's something that has to be cultivated and we have to learn how to do. But you learn to love your wife well. And in response to that affirmation, in response to loving your wife well, that ignites a passion for her that enables her to be able to give herself sexually and enjoy connecting sexually in a way that is very pleasurable, very fun and dynamic for both of them. Absolutely. And I, I do think whenever I was reading what you just said, uh, when I read that, I really could see how couples so quickly can lose connection. And it's all kind of a miscommunication. You know, he doesn't feel like he's performing well when that really isn't the case. It just is not, he's not meeting particular needs of her. But then she feels like because he's not interested anymore that it has to, she doesn't feel desirable anymore and he's not interested. And then she doesn't want to, you know, do things for him, loving, you know, things for him. And it just, starts like this and then mm -hmm. it just becomes like this. So right. I just thought that was, that was very interesting and, and how helpful this is and in, in knowing that um, it's not supposed to all come naturally. You know, that mm -hmm. is, that's really an, a great point of your article. And so you talk about, you know, okay, so, so what do you do? We're completely wired different, but we're meant to have this amazing relationship mm -hmm. that God created, but it's two completely different you know, just wiring of the brain coming together. Mm -hmm. So, um, so, so what do you do? And you said the key concept, um, you talked about keeping pace behind your wife's pace in both activity mm -hmm. and intensity. And I thought that was beautiful because really our perception, if, if, if I, I feel like a female's perception is that if you are, um, I guess taking your time, which is, I guess how you would, how you would put that, it means that you're sensitive, not just to us, but you're also wanting to enjoy the journey together. 
and not mm -hmm. just get to the end. And that's very meaningful for us and it makes us feel mm -hmm. appreciated. Um, and so I thought that was a, a, a very good point. And, um, and certainly, I mean, Josh, really what I like about this article is number one, you know, you talked a little bit about at the beginning, is it okay for a Christian counseling office to talk about this? And I have really enjoyed reading so much of your counselor's material and yours because nobody else is from a really Christian perspective, or if they are, it's just not very accessible. I have never read it. I've never seen it. And it's really helpful things and not only just kind of information, but helpful tips on, on what you should do, what you can do as a Christian couple and not feel guilty or, you know, shameful about or right. bad about yourself. Um, and be very just, practical, in yes, that. practical in kind of understanding, you know, where's, where's the conflict, where's the difficulty and, and how do we improve that and how do we move forward? And how do we, when it was specifically, when we think about sex, when we think about that key concept that you mentioned, you know, there's, there's this underlying principle, it's the pleasure principle, that uh, kind of uh, is a guiding, a guiding principle for the whole process. And the, the pleasure principle is really simple. And I think most everybody understands it in, in its simplest form. And, and that is, uh, we, we enjoy... We desire to do those things that we enjoy, okay? And so I, that's why I, I never ever have a desire to be poked in the eye. Like there's never been a time where I was like, you know what I really could go for right now? A good poke in the eye and that. Because I don't enjoy being poked in the eye. It's not pleasurable for me. That's not good. But those things that we enjoy and experience as positive, we desire to do more of. And, and this is true within our sexual relationship. And so when we have a uh, situation where a wife is not really enjoying the sexual experiences that uh, her and her husband are having, she's not going to desire to engage those uh, um, situations. She's not going to have a desire to connect sexually with her husband. You know, it's going to become duty sex or it's going to become a chore to check off the list because it's not something to be looked forward to or enjoyed. Uh, because it's not enjoyable and very often the way the reason why that is is the husband doesn't understand the differences between he and his wife and what it is she has need of in order to enjoy that experience it's it's like that concept that you mentioned of you know following pace behind the wife and that because by god's design men and women are different and women take 10 times longer to warm up and to be orgasmic than men and that's not because they're broken. That's God's design. That's normal across women. You know, two, two minutes of active thrusting and is, is pretty normal for a man to be orgasmic in that time frame and that. But for a woman, she needs 20 minutes or more of stimulation in order for her uh, body to be aroused to the place to be able to experience orgasm. That, that's 10 times longer than a man's body is wired and designed for in that. And again, if we think about the design within that, God's design within that, it means that if a man is gonna be a good lover, he's gotta be a patient lover, and that he's gotta uh, be tuned into and attentive to his wife in that, and not just his needs and his desires and what he's feeling, but engaged with her and following pace with her in order for it to be a positive experience for them both and for her to enjoy it, than for her to desire to connect and, yeah. and participate in that. Sure, sure. You have um, in your article, a wife is validated by her husband's sexual interest if that is expressed through connection and affirmation rather than pursuit and sexual need. I, I read that and I was like, ding, 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 ding. I was like, that is <laughs> so... So true. There is such a romance for us in those two things, expressing, you know, that you want to be connected and, you know, affirming us, you know, that we're beautiful to you and qualities that you love about us. That's everything. I mean, it, it's like, mm -hmm. you know, we don't really, well, I say this, I say we don't require much. You probably disagree, but, but I will say, I, I think that that's such a huge part of it. And I think, um, 
a lot of the kind of misconception is there's just kind of a, uh, there's an idea that if, if your spouse wants it and tells you he wants it, um, you, you do have to warm up to that, or you have to set the stage long before that, before you can get to that point. You got to be good to her. You got to make her cry. Like you talk about, you know, that's, that's just, that's just part of it. So that was, that was very true. It really did ring true for me. It's interesting um, that, um, you know, Josh, you're a guy, but you're writing things that I'm like, you know what? He's, when it comes to women, he's right. I mean, Josh, you know what you're talking about. That's basically what I'm saying. Um, um, I want to talk about though, also kind of the balance between there is a need for a woman to feel like her spouse still pursues her mm -hmm. and still desires her. So, you know, part of your article, you know, when you, you, when you talk about that, that it's not just about pursuit and sexual need, that is absolutely true, but mm -hmm. there is an element to us that we need to feel like you want us. You know, absolutely sort of absolutely and and what can happen sometimes and there's a variety of reasons why this can happen uh but a man can stop pursuing his wife and that that he you know he he chased her and pursued her before they got married and then once he caught her the pursuit kind of died or ended somewhere in there and a woman desires to feel cherished and pursued and sought after and sought out and pursued um, emotionally, relationally, sexually, that those things are all true. And uh, I like it, my, my pastor, a quote that I picked up from him is, you keep them like you caught them. And that, that there's a, a need to continue that pursuit even into marriage and throughout the, the life of the marriage in that. And too often, um, men can get lazy in that. We stop pursuing in that. And just kind of want it, to, want it to happen without having to put in any effort into it. And there's no way to be a good lover and a lazy lover. It doesn't work. And if you're a lazy lover, it's not going to take very long before your wife loses interest in making love to you or engaging with you. And so that's, that's definitely a component of it. Yes. Well, one of the last things that you, you say in your article is, Marriage is a license uh, to freedom without de demand. Tell me what you mean by that. Sure, that the, the best sexual relationships and the best sexual experiences are free from demand. It's, you can't demand uh, sexual pleasure. You can't demand, that's not the way God's designed it. It doesn't work. Sex isn't designed to be exploitive. It isn't meant to be selfish. It's not meant to be something that you can uh, pressure or demand and create and have be fulfilling and good. But instead, it's something that is freely shared. It's something that I share myself with my spouse. My spouse shares themselves with me. Together, we pursue enjoying each other and enjoying our bodies and enjoying this gift that God has given us. Uh, but it's an environment of freedom. It's an environment of safety. It's an environment of love. And, and that's where the uh, healthy, passionate, and sustained sexual relationship across the course of a lifetime comes from. Let me ask you this, Josh, just from a counselor's perspective. When it comes to that phrase, I want to tell you how I read it. Because as a, I completely understand what you mean, and you do explain it that way. But I, I read it and it kind of meant something else to me as a um, woman that is a Christian, that is married to a Christian man. When we got married, we did it very traditional. I was a virgin whenever we met. Um, mm -hmm. You know, how you feel like your relationship should be in the bedroom is um, a mess of ideas that you don't mm -hmm. even know, like really how it works, what it's supposed to look like. Um, right, because that you know, was covered in Sunday saw, school, like, right? Yes, yes. Or that you, you know, that you saw on, you know, your babysitter's television in the middle of a soap opera whenever you were like 15 years old. So like things like that where you're like, okay, so, so that's that and that's that and that's how this works and this is how it's supposed to look. And what I loved about this is marriage is licensed to freedom without demand. And I think it also means for mm -hmm. us and maybe just as me as a woman, it is freedom of whatever in your mind sex looks like. Mm -hmm. The demand of what the culture puts on you mm -hmm. that sex is supposed to look like. 
it is whatever right. is beautiful to the two of you and mm -hmm. um, what works and what makes you happy together. And that's the freedom of marriage. And it really is a beautiful place to get to, but you have to, at least I did, because I did not have all of these amazing articles that you wrote back mm -hmm. then. But, you know, you kind of have to work through this, finding out who you are, right. and realizing that who you are isn't wrong, because compared and, to what you think it's supposed to be, that's not you. And seeing the, the freedom that comes within understanding God's design for our sexuality, yeah. right? That God created sexuality for your enjoyment. He wired your body for your pleasure. And there's certainly boundaries around uh, sexual behavior that's intended to protect the sanctity of marriage and protect the, your relationship and, and keep it free and keep it fun yes. and, and keep it a positive thing. But within that, uh, that there's incredible variety, that our God is a God of incredible variety, that you look all around creation and see all the different beautiful things that he has made and created uh, for us to experience and enjoy. And that's definitely true within the sexual relationship, that when we're able to be comfortable in our own skin and come to terms with that, our sexual pleasure is something that God designed us for and desires for us to enjoy. And that within that, there is freedom to be able to explore and, and have fun doing so and have the safety to take risk and try new things and engage in ways that, you know, sometimes are mind blowing and are amazing and are great and sometimes flop. You know, and we go, wow, that didn't quite turn out like we thought it was going to. I was going, to, I was going for sexy, but it kind of didn't quite, came out more hilarious than <laughs> sexy than that. But that's okay. It's the yeah. safety of marriage that creates that freedom of expression sexually within the relationship. You're absolutely right. Yes, yes. Well, thank God for that. And uh, Josh, thank you so much for... Uh, I don't know if for you it's stepping out, but um, for me, it is. It is. I, I just think, you know, to be able to, to write an article that really to, to speaks to, I don't want to say the ignorance because that, I mean, I'm talking about myself, but just, um, but just what, you know, what we talked about, it fills a void that nobody mm -hmm. really talks about. And it makes us feel comfortable in who we are and who God created us to be. It's so good. If you guys want to read this article, you can find it at my counselor online. It's called How to Make Your Wife Cry, A Christian Man's Guide to Sex, along with some other amazing articles. Josh, thank you so much for talking to me today.